Today, I will continue with OMC Outboard Motors history. But before I go any further I would like to invite you to use the subtitles and if necessary, you can choose automatic translation to your desired language. I also want to thank those of you who have subscribed to the Boat Motors channel and invite those of you who haven't to do so. Special thanks to those of you who support my channel. In this episode we will continue with outboard motor history. As I mentioned in the previous episode OMC introduced the stern drive in parallel with new boat manufacturing. The stern drive, or inboard motors, were available both as separate units for boat builders, or as components of boats produced by OMC. Built to give the fuel economy and dependability of inboard engines, they were nevertheless as versatile as outboards. By 1965 the company was selling only about 20,000 stern drives a year, however, sales of the outboards were still outpacing them tenfold. The problem stemmed from the engine's new technology. Many dealers did not know how to repair these motors, and owners were often ignorant of maintenance needs. OMC met this challenge by developing week-long repair and maintenance classes for dealer training. For schools, two permanently stationed in San Francisco, California, and Waukegan, Illinois, and two mobile units familiarized mechanics with the new engines. Around the same time the Scott Atwater will get through many changes to the moment when will started a relationship with Sears, by then known as Scott McCulloch, this would last through the late 1960s. In 1964 the Elgin name was dropped in the USA and replaced with that of spokesperson Ted Williams or with the Sears or Gamefisher names. Later the same motors are going to be sold under the ESCA brand. In fact this is budget outboard motors without high-speed ambitions. During the 1960s, public interest in novel sports offered new market potential. Alert to novel trends, OMC entered the snowmobile industry with enthusiasm, introducing the Avinrud Skeeter and the Johnson Ski Horse in 1964. Another innovation was the Avinrud Aquanaut for skin diving, also sold under the Johnson trade name Air Buoy. Consisting of a floating gasoline-powered compressor, the unit supplied air to two masked divers at the same time. To follow the chronological facts here is the moment to mention another changes on the U.S. outboard market. Going back in 1927, Chrysler started selling its first marine engine, but Chrysler did not really get into the boat business until 1965 with purchases of sailboat maker Lone Star and West Bend Outboard. The Chrysler ambitions are to be the third major player with OMC and Mercury. At that time, OMC dominated the American and world markets and experienced the golden years of its triumph. Unfortunately, the next 10 years will be a real challenge, no matter that OMC created some of its best outboards. In 1967, OMC's fiscal year-end sales had reached $233 million. 70% came from marine products and the rest from snowmobiles, power mowers, chainsaw, golf carts and utility vehicles. Before I go to the interesting historical facts I want to mention some of the best outboard motors made for next 10 years. At the beginning of the decades the motors are with point ignition and similar design of the previous generation. By the end of the 70s the outboards are with CDI ignition and innovative new design. The 6 horsepower is one of the legends along with 9.9 .9 and 15 horsepower motors, followed by the 20, 25, 50 horsepower and the rest of the motors. I'm planning in my future videos to present most of this motors and give you detailed information, but now let's follow the interesting and twist-filled story. The Trade Winds Campers, purchased from OMC at late 60s, will not achieve the expected profits and will soon be closed. In the same year Johnson celebrated its 50th anniversary and thus began major changes in top management. Some of the managers are going to be retired. Along with other changes, Charles Strang was elected president and general manager of OMC and former president, William Scott, was elected vice chairman of the board. In 1974 and 1975, OMC would successively close the production of golf carts and chainsaws. 
In addition to the large losses the snowmobiles are going to turn to big disappointment. The reason of this is huge competition and the new and innovative Wankel engine. All of this will reduce the company's losses and provoke the restructuring. In the same time, OMC purchased a five-acre site in Hong Kong. Intended as a first step towards larger outboard motor markets in Asia, the move was also encouraged by a Hong Kong government program designed to attract specific, technologically advanced industries. Assembly operations began in the plant in 1975, with the manufacture of electronic outboard motor components following two years later. In 1976, Stephen Foster Briggs, one of the company's founding fathers, passed away. He was 90 years old. In this moment OMC is dealing with environmental challenges. It began in 1976, when OMC was cited by both the U.S. and Illinois Environmental Protection Agencies for polluting a drainage ditch in Waukegan Harbor with polychlorinated biphenyls. This saga will continue until 1980 and will cost more than $20 million. Simultaneously, Charles Strang began reorganizing the OMC. He sees the rivalry and necessity of uniting the Avinrut and Johnson divisions. Complete separation of the two since the company's beginnings had fostered an intense rivalry between them, along with disregard for competition by manufacturers outside the company. To unite the company against outside competitors, in 1978 Strang centralized all domestic manufacturing operations at the corporate headquarters in Waukegan, Illinois, charging Vice President James Chapman with responsibility for their coordination, as well as for manufacturing policy. As the 1970s were drawing to a close, Johnson employment had reached 4,172 people. Business was good but two new challenges appeared on the horizon, a pending nationwide energy policy restricting the use of gasoline for recreational purposes and the entry of the Japanese into the marine industry. OMC decided to focus its attentions on the Japanese and launch a price war. Chief among these were the Japanese firm Yamaha step-by-step step taking over OMC's European market, along with Brunswick Corporation, which makes premium-priced mercury outboards. A joint venture between Yamaha and Brunswick produced a low-cost engine called Mariner. Thus Brunswick then had an engine at both high and low ends of the market, leaving OMC in the middle. Realizing this fact Charles Strang made the necessary changes and OMC began to provide identical and horsepower motors to those offered by the competition. At the same time OMC bought out independent distributors overseas, thus gaining greater control over foreign marketing operations. In 1978, OMC cut prices in Europe, its largest international marketplace, by 25% to compete with Japanese brands like Yamaha, Honda and Suzuki. The Japanese then cut their prices by an additional 5% and OMC followed suit, upping the ante with an expensive advertising and marketing campaign. The Japanese did nothing and soon prices stabilized throughout the industry. However, profits fell from $12 million in 1977 to only $5 million in 1978. The fuel shortages threatened the industry in the early 1980s and economical, was the new word. Avinrud and Johnson both introduced 4-horsepower and 7-horsepower work twins. These small workhorses were designed for non-stop operation in even the harshest waters. Although the economy remained weak, consumers rallied driving sales of all OMC products up 39%. This surge in interest in marine products led to the introduction of the C-Drive power system, an outboard motor designed to replace inboards in larger boats. OMC had been working on the C-Drive for two years before its launch in 1981. The Japanese finally entered the U.S. market in 1983 when Yamaha began to sell outboards similar in styling and price to OMC's models. OMC sued the Japanese company for patent infringement and Yamaha soon found themselves redesigning their engines. Despite the new competition, OMC continued to thrive. For new ultramodern manufacturing plants were opened in 1984 in Oxford, Mississippi, 
Spruce Pines and Burnsville, North Carolina, and Calhoun, Georgia. A year later similar facilities opened in Lexington, Tennessee and Andrews, North Carolina. These new factories were equipped with robots and lasers to make production more efficient. The unprecedented modernization cost OMC nearly $100 million. In the next episode, we will follow the OMC, Chrysler, Mercury and Japanese Outboard Motors market war, but before we go there I want to invite those of you who haven't subscribed to the Boat Motors channel yet to do so. Thank you for watching the video.